sound. Let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ears. Let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your as a child in my mother's care oh yeah I never will forget my mother told me Jesus will always be there oh my now I'm a grown man living 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 on my own oh yeah I can truly say Jesus, he never left me alone. Can you help me say, Lord, I'm depending on you. Can you help me say, Lord, I'm depending on you. We don't have long, y'all. Listen. Growing up as a child. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In my mother's care. Go ahead and tell them what did oh, mama my, tell you. I never will forget my mother told me yes yeah. yeah, she did. Jesus will always be there. Oh my. Now I'm a grown man. Oh yeah. Living, 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 living on my own. Oh Lord. This morning I can truly say Jesus he never never left me alone. Do I have a witness that Lord, Lord I'm depending I'm on you. I'm depending on you, Lord. Say, Lord, Lord oh, I'm, I'm depending, depending on, on you. We don't have long, y'all. Listen. Oh, I'm depending. I'm depending. I'm depending. I'm depending on, on you. Oh. I'm dependent. I'm dependent. I'm dependent. I'm dependent on you. One more time. I'm dependent. I'm dependent. I'm dependent. I'm dependent on you. Whoa. I'm dependent. I'm dependent. I'm dependent. I'm dependent. I'm dependent. I'm dependent. Money get funny. I'm dependent. Change get strange. Friends get few. Don't know what to do. I'm dependent. Oh, I'm dependent on Jesus. 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 Oh, Jesus. 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 In the morning. Jesus. In the evening. Oh, Lord. Lord. I'm dependent on you. Anybody dependent on the Lord said, Lord. Dependent on Jesus, 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 Mother Jesus, Father Jesus, Sister Jesus, 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 Jesus. Can you help me, say, Lord? Lord, I'm dependent on you. morning. Let's get rid of this gum right now because Helen Walker might be looking at me. Yeah, 
I don't leave for one sermon today. What you doing with that gum in there? Amen. Amen. The Lord is good. And his mercy endureth forever. Amen. Amen and amen. It is good to be back in the house of the Lord. One more time. We'd like to welcome everybody here to County Lines Baptist Church Live on Zoom conference call and to all of you in person Father in heaven it's again that we come back to your storehouse thanking you Father God for another week for last night's sleep and our early morning rising dear God we thank you most of all for your darling son Jesus as we represent this as Palm Sunday Father God leading up to that great day that you nailed all of our sins to the cross. Oh, Father God, we ask that you will just show up and show out this morning. Have your way in this service, Father God, for we need a word from on high. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. We'll now have <coughs> the march in. We're going to do something different. We're going to trick the devil. We got to, sometimes you got to mix things up. The march in and the opening by the gospel chorus. We'll then have announcements. Church clerk, scripture prayer, often in doxology, two selection by the gospel course again, and then the preacher will come in his own way to bring the word of bread of life. If you will, please stand. If Jesus hadn't woke me up this morning, I still be If Jesus hadn't woke me up this morning, I still be Oh, if Jesus hadn't woke me up this morning, I still be Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I said if Jesus hadn't woke me up this morning, I
Hallelujah. 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 He woke me up. He woke me up. Did he wake you up? Did he wake you up? Oh, I'm so glad he woke me up. Didn't he wake you up? Didn't he wake you up? Oh, you were close in your right mind. He didn't let you sleep. Oh, not too late. He woke me up. He woke me up. Church, I'm so glad he woke me up. Oh, if Jesus hadn't woke me up this morning, I'd be Oh, if Jesus hadn't woke me up this morning, I'd be If Jesus hadn't woke me up this morning, I'd be Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Because he woke us up this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good morning, County Line Baptist Church. Those in the sanctuary, those on Zoom, we welcome you to our morning service. We welcome today Reverend Mario J. Hatchett on this wonderful Palm Sunday where they took palm branches and went out to meet him shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. We thank you again for being with us this morning. And we welcome you on Wednesday morning to Morning Glory Prayer. Join us on Wednesday morning. And I apologize, I didn't mute my phone on Wednesday. I don't know what I was saying. I hope I wasn't saying too much. But anyway, I was there. And um, thank you for joining us. And thank you, Sister Garrett, for that wonderful prayer on last Wednesday morning. And we're praying continually for those in need of prayer. And we have good news to report that Sister Louise Timberlake came home on yesterday. And she thanks everyone for your calls and prayers, uh, as we all do. And we're in need of prayer. Our April, March and April speakers today and next Sunday, we have Reverend Mario J. Hatchett with us. First Sunday in April, Reverend Micah Davis. And second Sunday in April, Reverend Timothy Hurt will be with us. We're asking all women to please stay back this afternoon for a short meeting with the women's ministry. We're inviting new members to join us in the fellowship of the women's ministry organization. And we'll be meeting in the fellowship hall after service. Other important meetings on March 25th, which is tomorrow, we'll have a women's ministry meeting at 6.30 in the Fellowship Hall. And on Thursday, March 28th, the Church Cemetery Committee will meet at 6 o'clock p.m. in the Fellowship Hall. Spring Revival is coming. Put on your shouting shoes. Join us on Tuesday, March 26th. And Wednesday, March 27th, for our spring revival, we'll have dinner at 6 o'clock. Join us for dinner. And at 7 is the worship service. On Tuesday, music will be by God's favor. And on Wednesday, the D.L. Trent Choir of Second Union will be our guest choir. And our guest speaker is Reverend Dr. Marlon Haskell. The food ministry will be giving out food on Saturday, March 30th, 7.30 to 8.30 a.m. We thank the food ministry for all that they do. This afternoon at Pleasant Grove Baptist Church, they will be celebrating Men's Day at 3 o'clock p.m. They will be serving lunch from 1.30 at 1.30. The speaker for their program is Pastor Adlai Allen. 
and the music is by Brown Grove Men's Choir of Ashland, Virginia. Also this afternoon at Chief Cornerstone Baptist Church, we'll be celebrating our Beulah Baptist Sunday School Union Day. All the Sunday schools in the county will be participating, and Brother Parker Holland will represent County Line at the program today. Refreshments will be served, so we're inviting you to come out and enjoy. COVID is still with us, and flu is still with us, so come and get a flu and COVID vaccine if you need one. If you're interested in getting a COVID or flu vaccine here at the church administered by the health department, please sign up in the fellowship hall today. There's a sheet for you to sign up and you'll be receiving more information later. <laughs> happy birthday, happy birthday. Brother Paul Athey will have a birthday on March 26th. Sister Louise Timberlake will have a birthday on March the 30th. Sister Denise Johnson on March 31st, and Sister Thelma Jackson on March 31st. Happy birthday and happy birthday to anyone who is celebrating an anniversary as well. And we say to you to trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. And as we introduce Reverend Mario Hatcher, he's been with us before. He's a native of Newport News and he has earned his doctorate of theology degree in 2023. He is the owner of a business, and in addition to working and serving in the church, he's a community activist, having fought for equality and justice for all people. When not serving in the ministry, Reverend Hatchett enjoys quality time with his wife, Mrs. Jordan Hatchett, his bonus three children, and we welcome today Jaymon, who was born in January. There's Jaymon. And so we welcome you back to our service today. God bless and have a wonderful week. Scripture time. For all the you who have the Bibles or technical devices, if you would, please stand if you're able and turn to First Peter, verse uh, chapter five. First Peter, chapter five. Amen. We're going to go down to the 10th verse. All right. And it reads as thus, coming from the King James Version. But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect establish, strengthen, settle you. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord as we once again go to the throne of grace and mercy in prayer. Please pray with me. Father, Father, creator of all good and perfect things, it's once again that we, just a few of your servants, humble ourselves and come to your throne of grace and mercy once again. Lord, we don't want to worry you, but 
we just pause to say thank you because you've been better to us than we could even imagine being to ourselves. We thank you, Father God, for blessing us and bringing us up to this appointed place at this appointed time. For you know better than what we know what we stand in need of. And Father, we thank you because you've never been short on delivering everything and even more than what we were there of. Once again, we say thank you. We thank you, Father God, for all who are present under the sound of my weak and feeble voice. And we ask, dear God, that you will just bless all those who are listening to us right now. We pray, Father God, for the sick, mentally, physically, and spiritually, dear God. For you know all about them. This world has nothing to offer, but Father God, Satan is a trickster. He slips us a counterfeit from time to time. So, Father God, we ask that you would just allow your Holy Ghost to lead, guide, and direct us. Father God, rise up in our life that someone else may see all of thee and none of me. Hide us behind the cross. Dear Lord, we pray that you will bless all of those who are in bereavement, Father, or who are going through something that we don't know anything about. Lord, give them peace and comfort. And Father God, for those who don't know you in the pardon of their sins, we ask, dear God, that something will be said or done that will help them to turn their life over to you and come on over to your ark of safety while there's still time. Lord, we pray for every branch of Zion preaching and teaching your word. We pray that you will help us to decrease that thou might increase. We ask, dear God, that you will use us, Father God, individually and as we are assembled together. We pray, Father God, that you will just help us to be that light that shines upon the hill, that others can see thee, Father God, that others can hear thee, that others can feel thee, Father God. And then, Father God, this morning, we pray, Father God, for this servant that you sent. Lord, help him, Father God. Lead God and direct him, Father God, to preach nothing more, nothing less, and nothing else but your gospel. For only your word will stand in a troubled world like this. We pray, Father God, that you will help us to be determined and planted by the river as that tree is, Father God, with long roots in you. Then, Father God, this offering, we pray, Father God, for every hand that gave, every hand that had not to give, every hand that chose not to give, Father God. We pray, dear God, that you will help us to realize that when we have you, we have all that we need. So bless us, Father God, as we say, it's not about us. It's all about you, that you may be glorified, magnified, and edified. This is our prayer in the mighty, most holy name of Jesus Christ we do pray. Amen, amen, and amen.
Amen. I apologize. I, I got so caught up in the prayer that I forgot to say, turn it over to good steward, hands of good stewardship. You know, y'all y'all pray. I'm so thankful that the Lord already knows my heart, though, because I know that the Bible say, be ye not deceived, for God is not mocked. So, that, so he knows it's going to be turned over to good stewardship. And if it's not, for whatsoever a man, woman, boy, or girl, sow it. Y'all know the rest. There is, there is none like you. Can't find nobody, none like you. I can't find nobody, none like you. Jesus, Jesus, it's a lie. There is, there is none like you. Can't find nobody like Jesus. Do I have a witness this morning?
Excellent. Excellent. Jesus. He's excellent. He's excellent. He's excellent. He's excellent. Do I have a witness? Do I have one witness? Jesus. He's ex excellent. Excellent. Jesus. Jesus. Excellent. Yeah. You put your hands together with us on this one. Listen, I've been through the fire, I've been through the flood, broken in pieces, and left all alone. But listen, y'all. But through it all, God blessed me. Oh, and through it all, through it all, God kept me. And I still have a praise inside of me. Yes, I still, yes, I still have a praise inside of me. Listen, I've been through the fire. I've been through the flood. Broken in pieces and left all alone. But I've got good news. But through it all, God bless me. And through it all, God kept me. And I still have a praise inside of me. Anybody have a praise this morning? Yes, I still have a praise inside of me. Listen, y'all. There's a praise down in my spirit. There's a praise down in my soul. A glory, hallelujah, that cannot be controlled. And I still have a praise inside of me. Yes, I, yes, I, yes, I still have a praise inside of me. Listen, although I've been wounded and I've been scarred, listen, I never gave up. Oh, no, I kept trusting in God. Oh, you know, but through it all, God blessed me. And through it all, God kept me. And I still have a praise inside of me. Anybody got a praise this morning? Yes, I still have a praise inside of me. Can I say it one more time? Listen. There's a praise in my spirit. A praise down in my soul. Glory, hallelujah, that cannot be controlled. And I still have a praise inside of me. Yes, I do, y'all. Yes, I still have a praise inside of me. No matter what you're going through, and I Come on, let's make one big choir and you and I. Come on, let me hear you, County Line. And I still. Do you really have a praise? Yes, I still have a praise inside of me. One more time, y'all. And I still have a praise. Inside of me.
Oh, come on, how many people can testify? I still got a praise inside of me. I've been through some storms, I've been through some seasons, but nothing was enough to take the praise out of my, li my mouth because when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, I can't help myself, but I owe God a praise. Why? Because the choir sung it earlier. He didn't have to wake me this morning, but I'm so glad he did. So I wonder if I got any witnesses in here who can say, neighbor, excuse me, but I got to give him praise because he woke me up this morning and started me on my way. Do me a favor real quick. Look at somebody around you and say, neighbor, excuse me if I get a little happy. But this week, it means something a little more to me. See, this is the week that started with saved me, with made ways for me, with delivered me. So excuse me if I just think about his goodness. Excuse me if I just think about his mercy. Excuse me if I just think about every time after 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 time that the Lord has made a way for me. your hands together all over this building. Come on, county line. I believe God has been good to you. And if he's been good to you, you know what to do. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. This is your fault. It's your fault. And I, I take the blame for with you, but it's mainly your fault. I came in here minding my business this morning, and when you sung that song about the Lord waking you up this morning, you got caught up yourself. And your getting caught up caught me up sitting right there because he didn't have to do it, but he did. All right. Uh, I'm here on assignment, amen. Amen, but I don't care what the assignment is. There's always some praise somewhere in there. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. I greet you in the name of Jesus, that at that name every knee must bow and every tongue must confess that he is Lord. Amen. Amen. What an honor and a privilege it is to be back in the sanctuary here at County Line to deliver what thus saith the Lord. Amen. I came here last time, and to, when I came to preach last time in November, amen, we were a family of five. Come back in January. What, what month is it? March. And, and we are a family of six. I promise you if I come back again, we will not be a family of six. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> amen. But I bless God. Amen. My son's name is Jamon, and that means right hand of favor. And so I believe that even through the fires of life, God will always send you some favor somewhere. Amen. I went all my life. That's my middle name. I went all my life not knowing what my middle name meant. Amen. But my wife said, do you know what your middle name means? And I said, mm, God always sends signs. So we're honored to be here as a family this morning. Amen. To just worship and lift up the name of Jesus. There's a word from the Lord, amen. I'm not going to hold the hour, amen. But again, while you journey to Matthew's Gospel, chapter 21, I do want to give honor to this music ministry and this choir this morning. Come on. Come on, County Line, amen. Amen. They took me back old school when they marched in. I so bad wanted to run from up front to the back to march in with them. Amen. 
but I'm, I'm not even gonna lie to you, my rhythm ain't always there sometimes. So it's best that I just stood over there. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 21. I just want to lift up a few verses in your hearing. To all the leadership of the church, the preachers, amen, Lottie Dottie and everybody. Amen, we thank God for you. Matthew chapter 21, beginning at verse number 8 and following to verse number 11. It says, what the word of the Lord says, it says, And a very great multitude spread their garments in the way. Others cut down branches from the trees and strawed them in the way. And the multitude that went before, remember that, before, and that followed, crying, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he was coming to Jerusalem, <coughs> all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? And the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. Let me go back to verse number nine. And the multitude that went before and that followed, crying, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. I want to preach for a few moments as the spirit of the Lord shall lead and guide me on the subject matter. He's on his way. <laughs> he's on his way. Pray with me. Most gracious and eternal father. It is once more and again that I come asking for your guidance. Father, I pray the same prayer that I prayed over the last 24 years of preaching your gospel. Father, I stand down so that you can stand up. I decrease so that you can increase. I step back so that you can step forward. Father, speak into my ears, which you would have me to speak out of my mouth. For your people need a word from you. God, we stand right now waiting in anticipation to hear which you would have to say to these, your people. So speak, Holy Ghost. Move by your power and move by your spirit. And God, we'll be so careful to give your name the glory, the honor, and the praise. For it's in the mighty, magnanimous, majestical name of Jesus the Christ that we do pray. And all those who believe that he's on his way shall amen. Amen and amen. My brothers and sisters, it is no secret that today is one of the most monumental days in the Christian life. It is the day that signifies the leading up to as far as the crucifixion and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am just as excited over Palm Sunday as I am over Resurrection Sunday. Because if it had not have been a Palm Sunday, there would never have been a Resurrection Sunday. I believe we need to understand the magnitude and the multitude of the meaning behind Palm Sunday. Yes, you will hear preachers say that this is the day that they shouted and praised him. But the same crowd a few days later shouted, crucify him. But truth be told, that's how many of us have even been in our lives. We shout one moment. But the next moment we live in doubt and we live in fear that God is really going to do what he said he's going to do. One moment we are faith walkers, water walkers, faith talkers, water talkers. But yet at the next moment when it seems like a fire has shown up, we begin to doubt all the faith talk that we had the previous moment. I believe there's some people in here who have that testimony even right now. Preacher, last week I had faith the size of a mustard seed or even a watermelon seed. But this week, with the obstacles that have shown up in my life, my faith is not as strong as it was last week. Here it is. Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem. And people, a multitude, have heard about his arrival. Some have thrown off their clothes and some have cut down palm branches and laid them in the street because they understand that when he who is Jesus shows up on the scene 
there has to be some element of you taking off which you've been carrying and laying it at the feet of that who can save you. Here, Jesus is coming through in this 21st chapter of Matthew. And the Bible declares in verse number 8 that there was a great multitude that spread their garments in the way. Because the Bible teaches us that when two or more are gathered in his name, he shall be in the midst. And the real reason that you can make it out of which you're going through is because you understand that when you connect with somebody else that has a testimony about how good the Lord is or how good God has been, it makes your walk a little easier to know that somebody else has been through the same thing that you're going through right now. I believe we got some testimonies in here that can testify that if I never knew somebody else made it through, I might not have made it through myself. But because I know my sister or my brother made it through, I've got the reassurance to know that if God can do it for them, he can show enough do it for me. And I stop by here to tell somebody today that that's the good news for you and I, that if as long as God never changes what he did for them, he can show enough do for you. I believe I got some witnesses in here who can testify that if God is blessing my neighbor, then I know that he's in my neighborhood and I can just hold on for just a little while longer because I know that with God, everything's going to be all right. The multitudes, they spread their garments in the street. Others who cut down branches laid them in the street. And the Bible declares that the multitudes were on one accord. I need y'all to understand this before I get to my shout moment this morning because it is better when we work together than if we work against one another. Here it is. They lay their garments in the street together. They cut palm branches down and laid them in the street together. And the Bible declares that when that was completed, the Bible says that then Jesus starts to make his entrance. In other words, when you link up with me and I link up with you, you, God can send Jesus to our situation. Now, a lot of time he won't send them because there's too much animosity or there's too much discord going on where he's supposed to show up. But when we all put our desires to the side, put our fleshly wants to the side and understand that there's a bigger purpose at hand, Jesus can show up and come see about every single solitary thing that we're dealing with uh, here in the Bible verse number nine after they've laid out their garments after they've laid down the palm branches the Bible declares that there was a multitude that went before him and a multitude that followed him that's really where I want to park at today because in all actuality there's a multitude that laid down garments and palm branches but there's another multitude that went before him to usher in his presence and another multitude that went behind him with that meaning y'all I'm glad you asked here it is the Bible declares that the multitude that went before was crying out Hosanna the multitude that followed was crying out Hosanna because you can't always wait until the battle is over to start yelling and giving praise to God every now and then you got to know that I can shout in the midst of what I'm going through because if I shout now then God will come see about me can I testify to somebody in here that's really all I came to tell y'all today was the simple fact that you don't have to wait until you come out to give God a shout but you can learn how to praise him in the midst of what you're going through right now is there anybody up in here that can testify I ain't gonna wait until the battle is over but I'm gonna learn how to shout right now you ought to look at somebody around you and say neighbor if you see me shouting it ain't because I've made it out it's because I'm making it through you ought to look at somebody 
everybody around you and say, neighbor, if you see me shouting, it ain't because I made it out. It's because I thought about if he could bring me out of what I was going through before, he can bring me out of what I'm going through now. Is there anybody up in county line who can testify what you're going through right now is only a season because God is on his way to your situation. I wish I had a church up in here who can say, I'm going to have a premature testimony. I ain't got it yet, but I'm going to shout that the Lord is making his way to my situation. The Bible says that they hollered out, Hosanna. You got to understand what that means. They weren't just hollering Hosanna because that was his name. Eh, that wasn't just his nickname. They hollered Hosanna because it meant save us. In Hebrew, Hosanna means save us. Meaning I don't have to just holler out Jesus. But I can holler out what he means to me. Because his name is synonymous with his actions. In other words, you, you know how it is. Uh, I, can, I can holler out Jehovah Jireh. And, and that's a signal that I need my provider. Right. I can holler out Jehovah Rapha. And that's synonymous to the fact that I need my healer. I can shout Jehovah Shalom. And that's synonymous to the fact that I need my God of peace. Because I understand that who he is is what he does. Y'all missed that. Here it is. Who he is is what he does. So if I need him to be a healer, I can call him a healer because that's what he does because that's who he is. Let me talk to somebody who missed it up in here. You going through all kind of hell and your mind is all in disarray, but you can call on the God of peace because he is what he does. So when I call him peace, I understand that he becomes my peace. They cried out, Hosanna, save us. Now, now, if I was to really teach this text, I would teach you the simple fact of the matter that there was a crowd before that yelled out. But there was a crowd after that yelled out. In other words, all through Jesus' journey, riding into Jerusalem, somebody was hollering out. Meaning, they hollered at his beginning, and they hollered at his ending. Y'all missed that. I ain't going to wait till I get in the thick of my problems to start hollering and giving way for Jesus to come in my situation. But I'm going to holler as soon as I get in the position or the predicament where I might even think that I need him. I don't know how bad this is going to be. I don't know all that I'm going to go through. I don't know the totality of the situation, but I know that something don't look right and something feel funny. I'm going to call him now so that I won't have to call him later. Can I testify to somebody in here? God is trying to tell you if you learn how to call on me at the beginning, I can make it easier in your middle. And when you come out of this, praise won't be a struggle because you've already got acclimated to it because you learn how to pray praise me in the beginning. You learn how to praise me in the middle. So when I bring you out, you coming out with your hands lifted up and your mouth filled with praise. Ain't nobody going to have to tell you to give God praise. But when you step in the presence of the Lord, you automatically go to giving him praise. You automatically go to giving him honor. Why? Because you started in the beginning. Go ahead, man. Go ahead. Now, I'm about to my shout moment. I promise you, I'm about done. I only had a couple verses today. Here it is. The multitudes that went before him shouted. The multitude that went behind him shouted. But then somebody had the audacity. Now, I need y'all to get this. Look, look, look at the scene. Clothes are in the street. Palm branches are in the street. A crowd before hollering Hosanna. A crowd after hollering Hosanna. But you still got people around you that's wondering, who is this? What do you do when you have called on his name? You have invited him into your family situation. 
but your family don't even know who he is. Yeah. You don't stop your holler because somebody else don't know him like you do. In other words, I'm not going to silence my praise just because you don't praise him like I praise him. Because your situation is different than mine. And I'm sorry, I get a little loud and a little noisy, but when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, I can't help but give his name praise. Who is this? It says that all the city was moved saying, who is this? And the multitude said, this is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. In other words, you don't know who he is, but just hang around me for a little while. <laughs> I'm going to tell you exactly who it is that we're dealing with now. And I, I urge some of you up in this church this, after this morning to testify that when you go through the storms of life, and when you go through the situations of life, that you are not let nobody downplay your praise or downplay your worship or downplay the anointing that God has put over your life. Because in this next season, you're going to need everything that you have in the inside. The enemy ain't playing with none of us. And he don't want none of us to see the blessings that God has in store for us. So in this next season, I'm sorry, I might have been quiet in 2023, but you better believe I'm going to make some noise in 2024. I'm getting ready to be like David when he went and got the Ark of the Covenant from Obed-Edom's house. I'm getting ready to bless God to everything that I'm carrying falls off of me. I'm getting ready to give God the un limited praise. I'm getting ready to give God the unlimited honor. I'm getting ready to bless God in a way that's going to scare myself because I know that he's been too good to me. And I wonder, is there anybody up in here that can testify this morning that because I know he's on the way to my situation, I'm going to open my mouth and start practicing how it's going to be when I come out of what I'm going through. Is there anybody up in here who can testify that I'm getting ready to give God a practice shout? I'm getting ready to give God a practice praise. I'm getting ready to give God a practice holler because when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that is done for me, my soul says hallelujah. I thank God for saving me. Is there any witnesses up in here that can show enough, give God some praise that you never would have made it if it had not been for the Lord who was on your side? I dare you high five somebody and say Say, neighbor, hear me out. I'm getting ready to give God praise. I'm getting ready to give him honor because I may not have made it out, but I'm still making it in. Why? Because I know that all things are working together for the good. And that means no matter what I go through, God is getting ready to turn my life around. God is getting ready to make ways out of no ways. God is getting ready to make doors open that were closed in my face. Is there anybody up in here that can say I'm not going to wait until things get better, but I'm going to praise God now because the more I praise him, the more he works it out. The more I praise him, the more he brings me out. The more I praise him, the more I can testify. Nay, in all these things, I'm more than conquered. Where my conquerors at who don't mind now looking around and testifying about the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living? Can I give y'all a few reasons why you ought to praise them? You ought to praise them because they woke you up this morning and started you on your way. You ought to praise them because they woke you up this morning and started you on your way. You ought to praise him because he woke you up this morning and started you on your way. Some of y'all still ain't got it. He didn't let you sleep. He didn't let you die. But he decided to wake you up early this morning because he's got a plan. He's got a purpose. And he's got a reason for your life. He's on his way. He's on his way. But here's the question, County Line. 
He may be on his way. But what type of arrival are you going to give him? Are you just going to sit? Or are you going to act like you know who he really is? I can't help myself when I think about his goodness and all that he's done for me. The people took off what they had on because sometimes what we're carrying continues to weigh us down. And a lot of us can't praise how we want to because we're too heavy. Spiritually, mentally, physically, we're too heavy. And until we take off what we have that's holding us down, we'll never be able to fulfill the purpose of praise. They took it off and laid it in the street. And you might say to me, well, preacher, you know, you know, I, I ain't got, I ain't going through what other people are going through, so, so I don't have that much to take off. Or maybe some of you ain't going through nothing, so you don't have anything to take off. Well, the text said that those who didn't have anything to take off went and cut down palm branches because they understood that I've got to present something to him when he shows up. You might not be a shouter. You might not be a runner. You might not quicken every 30 seconds. But guess what? You can at least lift your hands and tell them thank you. When we praise God together, God can come work things out together. When we praise him together, God, can, you can be in the sanctuary at County Line Baptist Church, giving God praise with your brothers and sisters in Christ. And God can hear your praise and go to your house and fix whatever you left. I'm just a believer that if we praise God together, God will go to the hospitals and touch the people on their sick bed because of the prayers and the praises of those who are in the church. I'm a believer because his word told me so. When Peter was in jail, the church had an all-night prayer service. And while they praying, here come Peter knocking at the door because of the prayers of the multitude and the praises of the multitude. If you believe he's on his way, you ought to prepare for his arrival. And what do you do when you prepare? You take off what's holding you down, and you put it so that he could walk on top of it. There might be somebody in here today that came to church and said, Preacher, I ain't, I ain't feel like he was on his way. But I just believe that if I have faith enough to believe that he's on his way, then he will come and see about me. Come on, let's stand all over this building. I want you to remember it looks dark and dreary, but if you prepare for his arrival, you're preparing for the light to come into your situation. He said his word is like a light to my feet and a lamp to my path. He, 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 he said, that's what the word is. But the Lord said, in the beginning was the word. The word was God and the word was with God. So if this word is a light, that means he's a light. Stop turning off your light for people. Because you don't want them to feel uncomfortable. <laughs> Can I make it plain real quick? Yeah. As we open up the doors of the church, check this out. 
I've had to adjust my life since this baby got here. And I know his eyes are sensitive to light. But if I'm downstairs in my house, it's dark at night. And he downstairs, and I try not to turn the light on. But what I realized is I kept bumping into stuff <laughs> because I couldn't turn the light on. My eyes didn't work too well in the dark. So I said, instead of me adjusting and not turning on the light because I'm afraid of what it's going to do to his eyes, how about I turn on the light and let his eyes adjust to the light? Don't miss it. We turn off our light because of how it will affect somebody else. But baby, I come to tell you, let your light so shine. Because they either going to close their eyes or they're going to adjust to the light that you're carrying. I turn the light on. My son shakes his head a couple times. And after that, he's fine. Because his eyes have now adjusted to that which gives me sight. Amen. Might be somebody in here today. You came to County Line and you said, Preacher, I don't know the Lord Jesus as my personal Savior. Today is a good day to get to know him. You ain't got to wait till Resurrection Sunday to get up. You can get up right now. Might be somebody else in here that says, well, I know the Lord, but somewhere along my journey, me and him, we're we not as tight as we used to be. But today is a good day to rebuild your friendship. And the third appeal is simply this. You may be in the neighborhood, but you don't have a church home. Technically, I've been through these doors four, four times, five of you include today, and I can testify that County Line is a good place to call home. So if you fit either appeal, I invite you down to this altar. Come and make Jesus your choice. If there's none for decision, and you just say, Preacher, I need prayer. And you ain't scared to come to the altar. I invite you down to the altar. That's a good song to sing at the altar. God, I'm going to give you my yes. From the bottom of my heart to the depths. Partial but completely. My soul says yes. Our Father and our God, we are just a few of your children assembled here at this altar. God, we're coming this morning, not asking for houses, cars, and land, but asking for your favor and your deliverance. God, we pray in the name of Jesus that you would come and lay your hands upon us. God, allow us not to cause any harm or danger, but God, enlarge our territory. Keep us in your divine will. Keep us steadfast and unmovable. God, I know that the tricks are out there, but God, we declare 
that we shall be caught abounding in the work of you. So, God, I pray now that you have your way in our lives. God, be who you are. There are people at this altar that need you as a healer. So, God, I implore you to heal their bodies. There are people, God, that need to know you as a provider because they got some needs that need to be met. So, God, provide like only you can. God, there are some people at this altar that need to know you as a healer, a provider, but also, God, as the Prince of Peace. For God, your word said, I'm just quoting your word back to you, that you'll give us a peace that surpasses all understanding. So God, give us that peace that got us walking around talking about why am I so calm. Help us, God, to not get upset at the things of the world, but to focus on the things of you. God, there are people at this altar that need to know you as an omnipresent God. A God that's here, there, and everywhere. God, we got loved ones at our house that didn't make it to church this morning. God, meet them at the house while you're still here with us. Have your way, God. Come and see about us. God, we yield to your power and to your grace and to your manifestation. Father, we step back so that we won't get in your way. Father, those situations that we're going through, we take our hands off of it so that you can put your hand on it. God, as the sermon came, we don't just want to be in the multitude that was behind you. We want to be in the front so that you can hear us and we can start our situation off giving you praise and glory and honor. This thing is here to kill us, God, but you know what? We're still going to give you honor. This thing is here to make us turn our back on you, but God, we're still going to give you honor. God, we don't know what this thing is here for, but God, we're still going to give you honor, glory, and praise. Because God, if you're the same God yesterday and forevermore, then we know, God, that whatever you brought us through in the past, is a prerequisite for you bringing us through what we're going through now. So God, continue to have your way. Continue to make ways out of no ways. And God, we're going to be the people that give your name the glory, the honor, and the praise. For it's in the mighty, magnanimous, majestical name of Jesus the Christ, we do pray. And all those who love the Lord and know he's on his way to your situation, why don't you open up your mouth and begin to give God some praise? Because he's worthy of our praise. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, let's switch it. Hosanna. Hosanna and Hosanna. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Do me a favor as you get ready to go to your seat. Look at somebody on your way back and say, neighbor, he's on his way. Now what you going to do? He's on his way. It's coming, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. He's on his way. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. Amen. He's on his way. He's on his way. He's on his way. We're getting ready to go down from this place. Let's stand one more time as we get ready for the benediction. Y'all, we made it. And that's more so for me because I'm going to tell you the truth. I fought this morning to preach my Easter message this morning. But I said that's for y'all next week. Just to give you a glimpse, there's been some conspiracies that led to some blessings. 
That's what we're going to talk about next week. A conspiracy at the cross. We're getting ready to go down from this place, but again, we thank God for your presence. And we pray that this week be a week where you learn how to shout in the midst of what you're going through. I'm a believer that God will work everything all right. You know how I know that? Somebody asked me how. Jude 24 and 25. This is what the Bible says. Now unto him who's able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both henceforth now and forevermore. And if you believe it, why don't you say amen, 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 and amen. Happy Palm Sunday. May God bless you. See you next week.